The special bond between San Francisco and Shanghai goes back more than 150 years to when they first became trading partners. Well, today they have an official sister city relationship. During 2010, cultural organizations across San Francisco are celebrating Shanghai as it hosts the World Expo. Well, the cornerstone of this celebration is an exhibit at the Asian Art Museum. Five rooms of artwork explore Shanghai's cultural history from the mid-19th century to the present. They show how the city grew from a treaty port into a cosmopolitan urban center of nearly 20 million people with a modern, rapidly changing skyline. You know, Shanghai is so diverse and rich. It's very hard to, you know, using several simple words to describe it. But if I have to, the one word I use is vigor and the other is dynamic. Right now, what's going on in Shanghai is so much about present and looking forward. People tend to forget about the rich heritage of Shanghai, but actually beneath the surface, there's a lot of effort to preserve the past. Zhang Jianjin's installation called Shanghai Garden combines past and present and sets the scene for the exhibit. The artist places modern silicone versions of Taihu rocks, a traditional feature of Chinese parks and gardens, on a terrace made from old Shanghai buildings. These are buildings that were new in the 20s and 30s. That's all being torn down for something new and different. So the building that he shows in that video as he's standing there has now been torn down, and he salvaged the bricks. Michael Knight, senior curator of Chinese art and lead curator of the Shanghai exhibit, Knight says this blend, this tension between old and new, east and west, has driven Shanghai's growth and inspired artists since 1843, when the British established a settlement along the banks of the Wangpu River. They built their trading offices, their warehouses, and their residences along that stretch of the river, because that's what they were looking for, was access to the river and to the port. The traders who were the patrons for these paintings wanted a fairly exact look at what they were, where they were. They wanted somebody to take back home and say, this is where my office is in, in Shanghai. As political turmoil and strife raged in other parts of China, the city became a safe haven. A lot of wealthy people fled into Shanghai as a place of refuge, and they became the patrons for what's called Shanghai School Painting, Haipai. The Shanghai School was very different. It was very big, bold brushstrokes, bright colors. So Haipai was actually a term that was applied by the educated elite in other cities, looking at Shanghai and saying, ooh, vulgar, gross, Haipai, bad stuff. And of course, Haipai continues to be much more innovative and becomes much more influ influential as, as history progresses. The changes in art reflect the city's rapidly growing cultural scene and increasing contact with Western art. And Shanghai is this interesting kind of mix because it's wealthy, it's intellectual, it's innovative, it's traditional, it's all kind of mixed up. But in that mix, amongst the artists, there are some who actually had the opportunity to go to Europe and study directly there. Some of these Western-trained painters thought the modernization of Chinese art could only take place by adopting classical European styles. Others looked to the rebellious post-impressionists for inspiration. As Shanghai grew into the 20th century, it reached what some say were commercial and cultural heights. The women of Shanghai, caught in the cross-currents between traditional and modern life, were depicted in colorful posters and a booming film industry. Their clothing was stylish and distinctly Chinese. By the 1930s, Shanghai was at the forefront of design, its posters and calendar art were striking. And Shanghai Deco furniture was in demand. But there was a dark side. Poverty, excess, and corruption would fan the flames of revolution. There are the arts of the revolution that were done in the 20s, 30s, and 40s. And these are anti-establishment. These are the intellectuals in Shanghai saying, you know, the high times, what's going on here is not right. We need to be aware of the problems of all the people. After the communist takeover in 1949, Chairman Mao Zedong used the arts to create images of working people and celebrate the revolution. 
You get into the propaganda posters of the 50s and on, and that's establishment art. So there's a very different kind of sense, even though it's about revolution. China opened once again to the West in the 1980s, and since then, Shanghai's artists have contributed to the country's explosive contemporary art scene. And I think the, the artists there are still somewhat finding their footing, but I think much more in Shanghai than in some other areas. You, you begin to get a sense of local identity and personal identity and reflections of the past and the present. Or, like the city itself, past and present merge to create something new, adding another layer of richness to Shanghai's unique culture. The Asian Art Museum's Shanghai exhibit continues through September 5th. For links to other Shanghai-related events, performances, and ex exhibitions taking place throughout the year, go to our website at kqed.org slash thisweek.